wow, that was big. Steve, I, Steve Brown, I believe you're right. That screen does make you look fat. I look a little stretched out in some of those pictures. I might be, I might be a little fat, but I, I feel like I was a little bit more stretched out in some of those pictures than I should have been. Wow. Love it. Thank you guys again. I'm honored to be your pastor. I'm honored to have said yes to Jesus and what he has for this city, for this region. I'm just grateful for him and what he's done for me in my life. Yeah. If you have your Bibles, turn to Mark. Chapter 6. We'll start with verse 45 here in a minute. Has any of you had the opportunity this week to touch God? To touch the heart of God? So many ways that we can touch the heart of God by ministering to others, by our giving, by there's just so many avenues of how we can touch the heart of God. And I shared with you guys about a month ago, a month and a half ago, I was at KFC and I was driving through and I was on a, in a hurry to get to church to open up for Wednesday night service. And there's a car that was broke down right there at the KFC and I was, saw their hood up, you know, my compassion, I always just want to go and help somebody, but I was in a hurry, I needed to open up church. And, I, and they asked me if, they, if I would give them a jump. And I said, uh, I said, hold on a minute, and, and, um, and I ordered my food, and I pulled up and, and asked him about their need to jump, and he said, well, it'll take about 20 minutes, because <laughs> our battery's totally dead, and our alternator's out, and I'm like, well, I don't think I'm going to be able to get your battery charged up enough at nighttime to get you on your way for very long, and I just, I said no. I said, I, I said I'm, I'm in a hurry, and I got to get going, and I got to church, and, and uh the Lord just kind of like said, you could have had someone else open. You could have made the time for that guy. And so I didn't. But this is what happened. I'm at the gas station last week. And the same people were sitting there in, at the gas station with their hood up. And I walked out the door and the lady said, can we get a jump? Same people. And I was like, um... I said, well, I'm really in a hurry. I said, but do you have any jumper cables? And they said, no. And I said, I don't have any jumper cables either. And I said, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll be praying for you. And, and I got in my truck. So I'm sitting there in my truck. And the Lord said, what are you doing? I said, I don't have any jumper cables. He said, well, they have some in the gas station. You know how much jumper cables are in a gas station. And I said, uh, all right. I got back out of the truck and I went into the gas station. I spent $25 on a little cheap pair of jumper cables and I come out and I and I gave them a jump and uh, their battery started sizzling and it wouldn't start and I tried to tighten it up and it wouldn't tighten up and she had this little box of earrings and so we started taking the earrings and pushing them down around the cable <laughs> like a screw down there to tighten the cable up and finally we got the thing tightened up and I sit there and and I said try it and they go wow 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 nothing happened and I sit there 10 minutes nothing happened Finally, I said, try it again, and it started up. And I was so grateful that it started up because their battery was sizzling. I thought, man, I'm going to be here all day. I done committed to this. If anything, I was going to go buy them a new battery. And so I got ready to walk away, and the Lord said, I want you to give them that $50 bill that's in your pocket. I want you to know that to touch the heart of God, we have to make some sacrifices to touch the heart of God. As I said before, we can bump into God and not touch him. We can bump into God and not touch the heart of God. And when you do things for people, when you reach out into a community like that, that is touching the heart of God. However it looks to you, that is touching the heart of God. And that's what God wants for us as a community this morning, is to touch his heart. And so I gave the $50 to her and she said, I never tell him I'm a pastor and I never even really invite him to church. It's just something I've just, I just have gotten a habit of. I just don't do it. I just, I just want him to know who he is. 
And when I gave the $50, she said, can I give you a hug? Her husband stayed in the truck the whole time, like didn't get out one time. And I said, uh, I said, yeah. And I gave her a hug. And I just told her that Jesus loves her. No matter what she's going through, that Jesus loves her. In her circumstance, Jesus loves her. And he wants relationship with her. And I walked away. I don't know where they're at today. But I know that that touched the heart of God by touching their hearts. All he wants you to do is, is to touch his heart. Through your prayer life, through your study life, through all these different avenues, if you could just touch the heart of God. The people that were out sitting on a lawn and Jesus was ministering to them, there was about 5,000 of them, a little bit more than 5,000. And Jesus had compassion on them because they didn't have anything to eat. They'd been there a while, and it, it, had been, and it would take a long time to get to the next city to get food, especially for 5,000 people. Shelly and I used to feed 500 people in Haiti on a weekly basis. Every day they would get food on a weekly basis. For years we did that out of our own pocket. And God blessed that. And those people were blessed and they were fed. But can you imagine feeding 5,000 people with three loaves of bread and two fish? That's what our God can do. That's what your God can do when you touch his heart. He can change everything when you touch his heart. That's all he wants is for you to touch his heart. Not just to bump into him with your nominal living, but to touch the heart of Jesus. And verse 45 says this, as soon as the meal was finished, Jesus insisted that disciples get in the boat and go across to the other side. And he, was, and he said he was going to stay and dismiss the congregation that was there. And this is how the message version. And after sending them off, he climbed a mountain to pray. He didn't just stay where he was. He climbed to a different place. He went to a different place to pray, to seek his father, to have communion with his father, to talk with his father. And it says, and at night, the boat was far off at the sea, and Jesus was still by himself in the land. And it said that he could see his men struggling with the oars. He sees your struggle. He sees your battle. He sees your sickness. He sees what you're going through. But he wants you to touch him. He wants you to reach out and call upon his name. His name has so much power. And he wants you to reach out and call upon his name, the name of Jesus. And he could see him struggling. And the wind was blowing. And the waves were tossing. And about the fourth hour in the morning, Jesus came toward them walking on the water. Listen, he will always step towards you. But he would pass you by. It says he intended to pass them by. He intended to pass them by. And the, some versions say that he would have passed them by had they not called his name. Do you see what I'm saying this morning? He wants us to touch out to him. Not always just for something that we need or, or, or things that we need in life or things that we want, but he wants to fill your heart knowing that you need him, knowing that you want him, that you want that intimate relationship with him, that deep intimacy with him. These guys were freaking out. It says in this version, it says that he intended to pass them by, but when they saw him walking on the sea, they thought it was a ghost. So obviously they've seen a ghost before. They thought it was a ghost walking out on the water. And they screamed, this version says, and they screamed, scared out of their wits. Can you imagine? Jesus just fed 5,000 people with three loaves and two fish and still had baskets of food left over. Now, now the guy's walking on top of water in a raging sea. And then look what he does next. Because they touched his heart. They touched the heart of Jesus. He steps into the boat and immediately the winds cease and calm down. This is the God that you serve who can feed a 5,000 group of people with nothing. 
He can take what you have, the little offering that you have, and make it into a, a mega amount of money. He can take what little gift you have on reaching out to a, a person that's in need and multiply that into your life, into your family's life, into your generation of people. Why? Because when you touch the heart of God, that's what he can do. He can feed the 5,000. He can calm the raging storms. Everyone in your life, he can calm. If you're living in a raging storm, call upon the name of Jesus. He's the one that can calm it. He's the one that can change everything about you. Everything that you're going through in life, Jesus is the one that can change all of those things. I mean, if you're struggling financially, God will change it. If you're sick, you're already healed. He paid the price. Don't ask him to heal you when he's already healed you. Ask him to manifest the healing that he has for you in your body. Quit asking him for something he's already given you. But touch his heart. Touch the heart of God and watch what happens when you touch his heart. And they landed the boat on the shore. I'm telling you right now, we get no glory, we get no light, but the word is spreading like wildfire. There's pockets of fire all over the world. They're lighting up. They're lighting up. And when this thing, when this thing blows, when, the, when God blows the wind on it, I'm telling you right now, you better be ready. Because it's going to light this country up. It's going to light this country up. And that's what God is doing. He's getting ready to light this fire. These little flickering flames are all over the place. And we've seen it. We've seen visions of it. Flickering flames everywhere. Why? Because people are touching the heart of God. People are not putting God behind a veil. He's actually able to come out in the room with you and minister with you and talk with you. In heaven, that's what it's going to be. Revelation talks about he's going to be right there with you. Not the way, and you can't touch him, you can't understand him. You're going to be right there with the God of gods, the one who created all things. You're going to be with him, sitting with him, communing with him. And it spread so vastly, so fast when they got off on the boat that Jesus was there. And this is what they said. They begged him, listen, they begged him to let them just touch the edge of their coat, of his coat. They said, can we just touch the edge of your coat? That's all it's going to take. We don't even have to touch you. We just need to touch what you're wearing. And we know we'll be healed. Have you touched God or you just bumped into him? Have you lived your life just bumping into God? Go to Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8. It's a story of a man who daughter was sick. Jesus had just gotten back from healing a man, had a legion of demons, comes back to the shore. The man comes to him and says, sir, please come to my house. My daughter is sick, and I, I, I need you to touch her. And Jesus got centered up to head that way. And you can imagine the story. The disciples were all around him. The disciples were just all around him. You don't know how bodyguards do. The disciples were just all around him. Kind of like last night, there was people all around us, and Shelly got us through the crowd at the concert last night, and she's weaving in and out of people, and we're all bumping in and out of people, and she got us through there. And that's kind of what was going on. This is a scene. I mean, it was, it was chaotic. There were so many people around because they, they wanted to touch Jesus. They wanted to see this guy that was healing, this guy that was touching people's lives and changing people's lives. They wanted to see this guy for themselves. So they were trying to press in. And the, and the disciples were all around him, and they're like, hold on, hold on, hold on. He's got to get somewhere. He's got to get somewhere. And they're running. They're trying to get to him, trying to. And there was a lady in the midst of the crowd, and, and, and she had an issue of blood. She had, 
hemorrhaging for about 12 years. And she had went to every doctor she could go to, spent all of her money to try to get healed. Because then when you bled like that, when a woman would bleed, it was unclean. You couldn't be around people. So she would, you can imagine she tried to keep herself in a place that no one knew that she was bleeding. No one knew what was going on. And here she had spent everything that she had. And she said, if I could only touch him, if I could only touch the, the hem of his garment, you can imagine what was going through her mind. I have nothing left. There's nothing else left but to touch him. For her, this was the last resort. Jesus was on a mission to heal, to touch a young girl. And on his way, listen, he's walking through this crowd. And people are bumping in and out. And she reaches through. Somehow she gets like Shelly, got through the crowd. If you want to get through a crowd, take Shelly with you. She'll get you through. If you want to get to Jesus, take Shelly. She'll get you through. And they, she got up there and she just... I mean, it was probably, she was probably crawling on her last, she was probably had her last little bit of energy and just reached out and grabbed the garment. And in a moment, Jesus stopped and he said, who touched me? Who touched me? Disciples were like, Lord, everybody's touching. There's all kinds of people around. They're all bumping into you. But see, there was all kind of people that needed healed. They were bumping into him. They were bumping into him, but they didn't touch him. They didn't touch him like she touched him. She touched him to the point that she drew power from him. You have the same access to that power today to draw it out of heaven and insert it in somebody's life. That's what you have today. And she touched him. And when she touched him, she was instantaneously healed. Who touched me? Her faith. Her faith made her whole. Her faith made her whole because why? Because she touched the healer. She touched him. And I'm asking you this morning, are you bumping into God or are you touching God? Are you bumping into God with your prayer life or are you touching God with your prayer life? Are you bumping into God with the lifestyle that you live or are you touching the heart of God with the lifestyle that you live? I'm telling you right now, we have to touch him. Jesus didn't forget about the little girl. This lady was healed on his way. He's not going to forget about you either. He knows what you have need of before you even ask. So this woman touches him. She's healed. And they come to him and say, there's no sense in coming now because she's, my daughter's dead. She died. Jesus said, she's not dead. She's just asleep. And you guys are not dead either. Some of you are sleeping though. Some of you are asleep. You're walking through this whole life like zombies asleep. Wake up. Wake up. Look at what's going on around you. Wake up and see what's going on around you. Jesus came to the house. They were all crying because she died. Jesus said she didn't die. She's alive. He went and he touched her told her to rise and she come up. And he said, now feed her. Randy and they were getting ready to start a class. Randy and Steve were getting ready to start a class. When you finally wake up, go to the class and get fed. Go to the class and get fed because when you get fed, it's going to change everything in your life. It's going to change your perspective in life. Knowing when you know who you are and whose you are, it'll change everything in your life. But we must first touch the master. Ask him to come into your heart, live in your life, forgive you of your sins, cleanse you, and believe and believe and believe that he is who he says he is. That's all you have to do this morning. Let's stand. See, that was quick and simple.
I might have a birthday party to go to or something. I don't know. Probably not. Oh, we got an event downtown, don't we? Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, that's my celebration, man. The whole city's getting together. Wow. That's awesome. Thank you, guys. Wow, the whole city's getting together on my birthday. Woo! I touched him. I touched him. He set this whole thing up just for me. I believe it. He t- I touched him. He set it up for me today. I like gold and silver. Not things of costly array. Let's close our eyes. I challenge you this morning, if you're just bumping into God, if you're just bumping into him, you're living a nominal life, nominal means that you're just skimming by, getting by with the basics and barely getting by. You want more. I encourage you this morning to come and pray. If you don't know Jesus, I encourage you this morning to come and pray. Because when you know Jesus and you say that one yes to him, this is what happens where we are right now. One yes. One yes in the little city of Martinsville, Indiana. It's creating a culture of people that want more. A culture of people that want more of him. If you don't know Jesus today, come forward. If you're living a nominal Christian life, come forward. If you're struggling, addiction, listen. He's the God that can take care of your addictions as well. If you're addicted to the pornography, listen. A lot of men are. Just come and pray. Give it to God. Husbands, if you're cheating on your wife, stop. Come, give it to God. Wives, if you're cheating on your husbands, on your Facebooks, private messaging people, you're not supposed to be private messaging, stop. Come forward. If you're living a lifestyle that's not for you and not of heaven, stop. Come forward and pray. If you lean on your own understanding in your walk with Christ, stop and lean on him. Touch the Father this morning. He is here. If you're sick this morning, touch the Father. Touch Him. Touch Him. Don't let Him pass you by this morning. Don't be afraid. Listen, if I was living in sin, I'd be the first one to the altar. I wouldn't care what you think about me. All I care about is The words that he's going to say to me, well done, thou good and faithful servant. That's what I want to hear. Father, you know the people here this morning. You know your people. You know their hearts, God. And we just thank you, Lord, for them. Thank you for their prayers being answered right now. Thank you for you hearing their heart, Lord. You know their hearts. God, you run to our rescue. Just like you did the the boys in the boat, you ran to the rescue. You said, don't be afraid, have courage, it's me. It's me, Jesus, and I love you guys so much. He loves you guys so much. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your people, thank you for this place. Thank you for what you're going to do today, Lord, and lives that are going to be changed today. In this city, God, this is the this is the turning point for the city. Lord, thank you that we get to be a part of it. We glorify you and love you. And all God's people said, Amen. Hallelujah. Have a great day, guys. Come to the party tonight.